I hope you're all well. Today I am here to wrap up my February reading. I had a pretty good reading month in February, I'm not going to lie. If I'm looking over here, I'm looking at my computer for my stats. <laughs> But I managed to read 17 books in February. I did DNF three books, which I will tell you about as well. So I'm on par with January. I read 17 books in January as well. Pretty good reading month, but less pages this year. This year, this month, um, 6,490 pages instead of the 7,142 that I read in January. And I listened to approximately 131 hours and 25 minutes as well of reading. So. I had generally a really good reading month um, and it will show in my ratings as well and I'm really really happy. So we are going to start off with a DNF and I think this is going to shock a lot of people because it shocked me, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm really sad about this one. I was reading it through January and then into February and I had to make a decision on what I was going to do with it and I took my sweet time to make a decision on this because I didn't want to make the wrong decision but I think I've come to the conclusion that A, I'm in a little bit of a high epic fantasy slump and that B, my time with this author may have come to a slight end, I'm not sure. So the book in question is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I am absolutely devastated about this, I'm not going to lie. I've really enjoyed Brandon Sanderson previously. I loved Miss Born Era 1, I loved Elantris, didn't enjoy Miss Born Era 2 and I didn't enjoy Warbreaker in the slightest. So then I've gone into this one, I did finish Warbreaker, I think it ended up getting about two stars if that. But I went into this one feeling really positive and I was like I'm very excited now to get into the Stormlight archives and I made it through book one of this and then I made it to page... 156 of book two and there's several things going on here which is why it took me so long to make a decision on what to do with this because I have this thing I don't know if it's because of my ADHD or just because of who I, who I am as a person but I have this thing where if it takes me longer than a week to read a book or even just a couple of days I do get bored and it might not be the book's fault it's my fault I get bored of picking that book up continuously does that make any sense so I'm sick to death of seeing the book. I just want it to be done and dusted. I might be loving the book, but if it takes me too long, I start to get bored. This book, I think I was reading for about four or five weeks and I was getting sick to death of having to keep pick it up. I was getting really, really sick of it. But at the same time, I wasn't reaching to pick it up and reading chunks and chunks of it at a time. So I also wasn't necessarily enjoying myself either. Um, we have three POVs in this book. We're following, I honestly can't even remember the names of them properly. We're following a soldier, a bright lord and a young woman scholar. Now I liked her, I think she was called Shallon if I remember correctly. I liked her story more than anybody else's. Caladin was the soldier and I can't remember the name of the young lord. Um, but Caladin was the soldier and we got more from him than anybody else. We even got some chapters in his past as well. And... In general, I couldn't tell you how their paths end up crossing. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Shallon is the young lord's niece, I think, if I remember correctly. But overall, I wasn't enjoying my time with this story and I think I kept ploughing on with it. I should have DNF this earlier, really. But I think I kept ploughing on with it because I have this thing in my head that I need to like Brandon Sanderson's books. And that doesn't have to be the case. I've already proven that. I didn't like Miss Born Era 2. I didn't like Warbreaker. I can like some and not others. But I think for me, I needed to like this because I wanted to continue on with the Stormlight Archives. If I don't read this, I can't necessarily continue on with it, this series. So this ends my relationship with that series. I do have the secret projects that he's done and I will give those a try. But I went on too long with this and it's put me back in a high fantasy slump. And I'm really annoyed about it because I've only just got out of that after about 18 months. So I'm really, really annoyed about it. I have a lot of high fantasies on my 24 books in 2024. And this has just put me right back in that slump and I'm really pissed about it. But I've ended up DNFing it. It is what it is. 
I don't see myself coming back to try this again um, to see whether or not I can finish it off just so that I can continue on with the Stormlight Archives. I think that's it now. I'm just going to have to unhaul all of the Stormlight Archives so I'm never going to get around to them. It's a real shame because I do have them all. They were all gifted to me by the same person, which was Megan. So thank you, Megan, for sending all of these to me. I truly appreciate you. You're an angel. But unfortunately... It's just not worked out. I will keep Mistborn Era 1 and also Elantris. I could do with somebody letting me know though, can I go into Lost Metal without having read the Stormlight Archives? I know that you're supposed to read the Stormlight Archives and then go into Lost Metal, even though that's Mistborn Era 2 Book 4. But I'm very aware of the fact that in theory you're supposed to read the Stormlight Archives first and then Lost Metal. So can I read Lost Metal without having read all of the Stormlight Archives or is that the end of my journey with Mistborn Era 2 as well? I mean, quite frankly, I won't be mad if that's the case because uh, I didn't enjoy Mistborn Era 2. But um, I will read Lost Metal if I can read it without continuing on with the Stormlight Archives. So do let me know. But yeah, that was my first DNF. Took me a while to make that decision, I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. Um then we did go into Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I really enjoyed this one. I had a really good time with it. The end had me shook. Um Lauren Roberts, how dare you? I'm very excited for the rest in this series. I actually ended up I don't even know where it's gone. Um Oh, it's over there. I actually ended up ordering the one from Waterstones with the purple sprayed edges. So I will get rid of this one. It's got like a slice down the pages on this side. So I will end up getting rid of this one because I've then pre-ordered uh, both Powerless and... That is Powerless. Both... What is the next one going to be called? Whatever the second one's going to be called. Well, the 2.5 book. And then Reckless as well with the sprayed edges from Waterstones. I've ended up pre-ordering those. So I really enjoyed this one though. I gave it four and a half stars on Goodreads and four stars on... No, I it got four and a half stars on Corpile, four stars on Goodreads. And I had a very good time with it at the end. Shooketh. I'm very excited to continue on with it. Then I did read The Winter House Mysteries by Ben Gutterson, which is the third and final book in this series. And I gave this one four stars. This was great. I really enjoyed this series. I don't know if I necessarily enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed the others. I think the first one was my favourite in this series. But I had a good time with it nonetheless. This is a middle grade series following a young woman called Elizabeth Summers who... Oh, I forgot that was in there. Following a young woman called Elizabeth Summers who ends up being shipped off to Winter House um for christmas and new year by her aunt and uncle she's an orphan and she ends up finding more than she bargained for in this hotel there is like a little bit of a fantastical element in here just a sprinkle of fantasy and there are lots of puzzles and stuff that elizabeth is trying to solve and it's really good i just had a good time with it so yeah finish this one next another dnf and it was the city of stardust by georgia summers this was the first adult fair loot book of the year for january and i was gutted about this one i'm not gonna lie i was not having a good time with this i was a little bit bored i there was no world building in this book i didn't understand the world in the slightest and what kind of world we were in and I was just a little bit bored, to be honest. And then when I went through the reviews on Goodreads, because if you've been here for a while, you will know that I do this. When I'm struggling with a book and I'm thinking of DNF in it, I go through the negative reviews on Goodreads to see if somebody can put into words the reason why I'm not enjoying myself. And uh, it turns out that if you like the likes of The Night Circus, you will enjoy this book because of its lyrical prose. I hadn't even picked up on the fact that I wasn't enjoying the writing style. <laughs> And I was like, okay, this makes way more sense now. So uh, yeah, the writing style wasn't for me either. And I just wasn't enjoying myself. So unfortunately, I have DNF to the first Fairy Lou adult book of the year, which is devastating. <laughs> Next, we do have The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. Ashley does it again. This got five stars. I absolutely love this. It was so good. This gave me all of the vibes of The Lake House that has Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves in. Such a good movie. And if you enjoy this book, I would recommend that movie and vice versa. This was really, really good. Um, there are seven years. We're following Clementine West. Um, and she ends up finding a man in her apartment one day evening or one morning i can't remember which way around it goes i think it's one morning um however she very quickly realizes that this man is not from her present day in fact he is seven years in the past 
and um things just kind of go from there this was really really good i really enjoyed it the very again spring color fantastical element in here it was really really interesting ashley does such a great job with these and i'm very excited about her next book that's coming out later on this year so five stars for this one then we had things we hide from the light by lucy score i loved this again five stars for this one we are following nash morgan who is nox's brother yeah nox's brother from the first book and we are also following lena who is nox's best friend um these two end up as kind of like rivals i don't really want to say enemies but kind of like rivals um and they end up living next door to each other and it's really really good something happens at the end of the first book to nox uh sorry not nox nash and he's got ptsd also severe anxiety as well quite horrific panic attacks and lena kind of helps him through this really hard time and it's such a beautiful story and i really really enjoyed this one do check your triggers or content warnings before you go into this one because of all of the things i've just mentioned but it was really good and i loved the plot the storyline that's going on in the background of all of these books i'm so excited to get to the third one but yeah really enjoyed this one five stars then i read icebound by meredith trap and this one i'll show a picture of it here i had as an arc and this was really good it got four and a half stars on core pile four stars on goodreads and i had a great time with it um we're following two characters whose names right now off of the top of my head i cannot remember he is a hockey player she is an artist she's at uni college and she picks him up one night in a lift you know the like an uber um she picks him up one night in a lift after he's had a little bit of a crappy night and they end up chatting she hasn't recognized him at all so when they end up with the conversation of like what do you do for work or how old are you he's like oh i'm a plumber um and she says that she's a doctor so he's of the opinion that she's like in her 30s and he's like 34 36 something like that and it turns out that is not the case she's actually about 22 so it's an age gap romance and it's really they end up fake dating and i had such a good time with this one it was really good so sports romance fake dating uh friends to lovers age gap romance and if i remember correctly was there a third act breakup in this i don't think there was it was a really good read and i really enjoyed myself so if you're looking for a really good sports romance this one was fantastic and i believe the second one in the series is coming out later on this year called homebound by meredith trap and this one is single dad romance and a bull rider she's a female bull rider and i'm really excited about it, it sounds great but you have seen parts of him in the first book because he's one of the main guys uh, our mmc's teammates so i would recommend reading icebound first even if homebound has gotten your attention immediately read out icebound first it was great it's definitely worth it then after the come down of making my decision with the way of kings i did decide to pick up cody by jared cullum this is the third time i've read this graphic novel and i absolutely adore this five stars every single time we are following katia who is a young girl who is on holiday in alaska she's with her mima and she's just having a holiday in alaska things are pretty boring for her she's not having a great time and then one day when she's on her way home from the shops she ends up coming across this bear that has managed to get himself stuck under a tree uh due to some lightning crashing down and crashing the tree down he was trying to protect katia so she tries to with the help of her mima they get the log off his leg and they nurse him back to health and then they have to go back to Seattle due to one of her aunts being unwell. So they go back to Seattle and this is the story of the bear journeying to Seattle to try and find Katia because he doesn't want to be without her. And it's just absolutely adorable. The illustration style in here is beautiful. It is all watercolours and absolutely stunning. Obviously the bear doesn't talk, but it's just such a beautiful story and I love it. Every single time, five stars. I always read this if I'm feeling a bit slumpy. So really enjoyed this one. Then we did have Reckless by Elsie Silver, which is the fourth book. Yep. Fourth book in the Chestnut Spring series. This one is following Theo Silver, who is a bull rider, and also Winter, who is Summer's sister. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I will say... <laughs> 
puns intended everywhere here but i was very cold with winter throughout this whole series so far um in summer's book and then in this one to start off with i was very cold with her i thought she was a little bit of a bitch a little bit stuck up her own ass and thinking that she was better than everybody else however this book really warmed me up to her and I, by the end of it i really loved her character i think both the character arcs of theo and winter throughout this whole story were outstanding and i just had a really good time with this story it was very very good um and i just loved it also there is the pregnancy trope in this it's not a surprise on the back it says um it was supposed to be a one-time thing a secret but that little plus sign is going to make the secret impossible to keep so um it is mentioned on the back pretty much clearly without saying there is a pregnancy in here it is mentioned on the back it's not a surprise pregnancy but there is the pregnancy trope in here so if that's not your thing i think it was done really really well in this and i actually really enjoyed it um and i gave this one five stars absolutely loved it next we do have criminal intentions by cole mccade i don't own it i'm going to show a picture of it here this was one of my patron picks from january and i thought this one was good this is a detective story um the detective is gay and his partner is also gay and they're actually on the case of some uh, murders of queer men and it's all very you know hard hitting for these two guys obviously the, their community is being targeted and it's basically them trying to solve it and it was really good i enjoyed it it was like an episode of criminal minds which i don't really watch but i do enjoy me a good criminal tv show uh so i had a good time with it i gave it three stars i would think about continuing on with the series but i'm not in any mad rush to do so but for what it was i did enjoy it and i gave it three stars next we have spy x family volume 2 i really enjoy this series it's a good time uh we in this series we're following uh twilight who is a spy and his latest assignment is that he needs to target someone whose child goes to this very prestigious school so he ends up adopting this young girl who is called um anya and he ends up finding this woman and she ends up helping him out they pretend that they're married turns out anya can read minds twilight is a spy nobody knows twilight's a spy except for anya and his wife is an assassin and again no one knows except for anya <laughs> And it's really good. I just have a really good time with this one. It's a lot of fun and I'm really enjoying reading this series and I'm very excited to continue on with it. I did give this one four stars. It got four and a half on Corp. I also four on Goodreads. Then I did read Broken Bonds by Jay Bree. Um, this is one of the authors that's going to be at Rare. So I wanted to try and get to this one. This one is... You know what's really funny about this actually I've, is I've got it down as being rated as four stars on core pile and I think I need to bring that down to a three star because in all honesty I can't 100% remember what happened in this book. Our main character that we are following it turns out these people are bonded uh, to other people and our girl is whose name I, I don't even remember her name like a little longer than a few minutes later ollie she's called my god that took me way too long she says everybody else's name a million times yet nobody says hers ollie she's called and she ran away about five years ago from this place but it turns out she's now been brought back by her bonded and there are four or five of them north knox griffin atlas and gabe five of them that she's bonded to now she refuses to bond to them because she thinks that this is going to cause a load of problems with the world i don't know the full ins and outs of it we never got to the full ins and outs of it um so she refuses to bond with them and they're all confused they're like wh one why did you run away they're all like pissed at her for running away and they're all pissed at her for not bonding with them and then she starts to get to know them as the story goes on she's got this best friend called sage i actually really liked sage's character um and i remember her more than anybody else in the book i'm not gonna lie uh, but yeah, I think my rating for this needs to come down to a three, maybe. I enjoyed it while I was reading it, and I did think that the cliffhanger at the end was very, very good and does have me intrigued to read the second book. But right now, in this moment, I've got no idea what that cliffhanger was. <laughs> I read it, I enjoyed it, I saw, I conquered, I left, I remember nothing. <laughs> 
so maybe a three star i think i might have to read the last couple of chapters of this before i can pick up the next one in the series but yeah a three star for that one i think then i did read lunar new year love story which is a graphic novel this was really really see really really sweet um it's got all kinds of things going on in it and it is a love story following uh val essentially who hates valentine's day uh, for the longest time she loved it and then her mother passed away and she's just been devastated about that fact ever since she used to get letters sent to her every year on valentine's day um that she thought her dad thought it was an imaginary friend she was pretty convinced it wasn't she thought it was saint valentine coming to her giving her letters every single year and from this point on she ends up like dating this guy at the her friend like insists she dates this guy but her friend is also a little bit flaky with dating she likes the start but then she when it starts to get too serious she wants out and she just leaves them high and dry um so she starts dating this guy but things are not going to plan and stuff and there's a lot more to it it was really good i love the illustration style and i really enjoyed the story i thought it was a really beautiful story and i had a good time with it so i gave this one four stars and i would recommend this graphic novel to people i think it's very very good sorry for the noise school's finished <laughs> Next, we do have Bloodlands by Stacey Marie Brown, which is book five in this series. I gave this one three stars. This is probably my least favourite in the series to date. Um, there are a couple of things that I did pick up on in this one that I haven't picked up on previously. I think we started and finished the book in the same place and I was just a little bit bored and stilted with it. I am excited to get to book six and finish the series off, but I'm really hoping that more comes out of that book than what we got out of this one. Um, and I am looking forward to wrapping the series up i have been enjoying myself with these books but this one just fell a little flat for me unfortunately then my third dnf of the month was you again by kate goldbeck this one i was absolutely devastated about because i was really looking forward to picking this one up i got around 70 odd pages into this one the chapters first of all were really fucking long and absolutely unnecessary Ch page 79 i got to chapter four page 79 the chapters in this were unnecessarily long. I was promised, literally written on the back, inspired by Nora Ephron's iconic Friends to Lovers rom-com when Harry met Sally, you again is a sparkling story of friendship and modern love in its many forms. We're following Ari and also Josh. Um, in the beginning of this, Ari is one of the people that works in the street that's trying to get you to sign up to the charities and stuff to help with charity. And she ends up coming across Josh, but he walks past her very rudely, having nothing to do with her. She then goes home and she's also kind of sleeping with this friend of hers that works for the same company i feel very awkward right now because there is a bus of kids sat right outside my window <laughs> um she ends up sleeping with this guy that she works with so they're very much so friends with benefits nothing else to it so he ends up coming around and then she gets a knock at the door and it turns out it's josh who is dating her flatmate Turns out Ari's always also sleeping with her. So anyway, her the guy that she's sleeping with then leaves. Um, he's absolutely fine, no problem. And then Josh sticks around and he starts dinner for him and Ari's flatmate. And Ari makes it very clear that she's also been sleeping with said flatmate. And things just kind of go from there. Then we jump a few years into the future and not jump into the future, like you know we're in the past we jump a few years they end up bumping into each other again they have a very standoffish kind of conversation and then we jump a few years and they bump into each other again and i was at a point where we we're about to jump again but honestly i was so fucking bored of this i really enjoy I love When Harry Met Sally. I think it's a really good story. However, what I get from When Harry Met Sally is Meg Ryan as a whole. She is cute. She is cosy. She is fun. That is a rom-com book and I'm expecting all of those things. I want cute, cosy, fun, romance, adorable, really, really sweet, kicking my feet, giggling because it's just adorable how cute these two people are. This is not that. Ari is very much a sex addict and when she's not a sex addict, she's on drugs and alcohol fine whatever floats your boat josh is stuck up and boring and i didn't like his character in the slightest i got no cute adorable funny wanting to ship these two in the slightest i thought they were insufferable and i just couldn't continue on through this story it was not giving when harry met sally not even a little bit so i ended up dnfing it i wasn't having a good time and that's my reason why <laughs> 
next we do have Always Mine by Laura Pavlov. This is a best friends to lovers romance. Nico is a firefighter and Vivian, I think if I remember correctly, she owns her own shop or something. I can't remember what the full ins and outs are of Vivian's job. Uh, they've been best friends since kindergarten and they become lovers. For me, love that, love that set up love it it's my entire relationship with andy we've been best friends for 12 years we have been together just shy of two years and best friends to lovers is my favorite thing i love it it's one of my favorite tropes along with fake dating this however i was not invested in this relationship because i wasn't invested in the best friendship unfortunately for me we didn't get much time with these two as best friends being best friends being platonic until she propositioned him and i feel like we need more of that in order for me to be invested and ship them and be like this would be worth the risk you know the characters the side characters like her dad and the other guys at the firehouse and their friends in their friendship group all invested in this because they've had this since kindergarten little bit like everybody else in mine and andy's life who was very invested in me and andy being together and were like oh my god finally when we finally did it that's what i got from those side characters with these two however as a reader it's a little bit like someone new coming into mine and andy's friendship uh, right before we got together and then them seeing everybody being excited about us being together and then being like why is this such a big deal you know they don't get it because they've not seen the 10 years of friendship building up to this as an outsider that's how i felt reading this because we didn't get the whole friendship side of things we got them hanging out once or twice in a bar on a night out but the like the second time she propositioned him and i was like Dude, come on, let me be more invested in this friendship. Give me another 50 pages of the friendship first, please, for the love of God. I did give it three stars. I liked the writing style. I thought the, the relationship was cute. I thought they were adorable. But in general, I wasn't fully invested in this relationship before it happened. Next, we do have my favourite book of the month, which is saying a lot because I read The Seven Year Slip and also Things We Have From The Light this month and they were fantastic books. However, I got an arc of a book and I'm obsessed with this book. I'm trying to get everybody to read this book. And it is Lights Out by Kayla James. This is an F1 romance and I am so completely and utterly in love with this book. I'm obsessed obsessed if you like your sports romances if you are specifically an f1 fan you're gonna love this this is an f1 romance so sports romance it is um a first female f1 driver it is close uh, forced proximity it is friends to lovers they're strangers to begin with but they become really good friends and then they become lovers obviously from that it is forbidden romance age gap romance there's an eight year age gap between these two he is based off of charlotte clerk so if you're a fan of charlotte clerk you're going to enjoy this one there is no third act breakup and it's absolutely fantastic it's the first in a quartet the second one is going to be a single dad romance and i'm really really excited and i loved this we're following blake and Ryder. Ryder is already a four-time world championship driver and he has been out and off the track uh, for the last 18 months due to an injury that he got halfway through a season blake is a newbie which she's deemed a newbie driver she's been driving for around eight years i think it is but not in formula one she's been driving in other racing things um racing the sports <laughs> and she ends up being picked up by this new team in f1 called nightingale who is run by an ex f1 driver called nikolai now he decides to take a risk a on blake who is a new driver essentially to f1 and b on Ryder, who is a four-time world champion that's coming back from a very severe injury so he's taking a huge risk that's a huge risk both of those are huge risks for an established f1 team never mind a new f1 team so they go out onto the track, they're doing um, pre-season training and Ryder has no idea that Blake is a woman. They end up going toe-to-toe -to -toe on the track and then when they get back to the pits, 
obviously Blake takes her helmet off and Ryder is like, what the fuck? He has absolutely zero problem with there being a woman on the track, unlike some of the other misogynistic drivers. Um, and then he offers to let her stay with him for the season so that he can help her out with racing and stuff. And it just goes from there. I absolutely love this. This was fantastic. The writing style was outstanding. I think Kayla's done a fantastic job of researching F1 as a whole, like the sports, making sure that she gets all of the terminology down correctly and the sport in general. If you are not an F1 fan and you're worried that you will not understand this book because of the F1 references, there is a whole section of terms in the beginning of the book so that everything is explained for you. Um, it's not ridiculously heavy on the F1. All I'm saying is that the F1 references in here are done very, very well. There are also podcast elements in here. You will get like um, sections of... Where is the first one? Sections of like um, article excerpts, things like that, Instagram posts. And then there is like a podcast element in here as well where these three girls who love the F1 kind of come together and have a podcast discussing the F1 and we get little discussions of that as well, uh, which I just find really fun. Um, like there's a press room transcript there. I just find the podcast element to it really really fun especially on the basis that they're women as well I really enjoy that element so I had just a great time with this book I thought the writing style was fantastic there is a lot of f1 the grid girls um there's a lot of f1 romances I'm seeing coming out this year and a lot of them are traditionally published this one is indie published it's on kindle unlimited you can also buy the physical copies as well it was really really good listen I'm just going to keep shouting from the rooftops top about this book it was so good five freaking stars my favorite book of the month it was very very good then we do have Faye Bound by Sarah El Arafi. This one was my patron buddy read for January and February and I enjoyed this one. I had a good time with it. I ended up giving this one four stars. Um, I thought it was really good. I loved the world building in this. I wasn't overly fussed about the characters, but I loved the world building, the elven lands and the fey lands and getting to know each of the different types of people and also how their worlds both work and stuff i thought it was really good i think the thing that's kind of made me a little bit more excited about this than it did when i was actually reading it and when i finished it was the discussion i had with my patrons last night about this book and the fact that we were kind of conspiring about what could happen in the next book there are so many different directions that this book could go in and it's made us all pretty excited even those of us that didn't enjoy it as much it's made us all pretty excited to see what comes next and see where the next book goes and i think as well also i suddenly discovered in the back that we also had um this little Leetle's prophecy journal that's been crossed out and is now notes on mosima which is the Feylands, and it will explain who everybody is who uh what they do their pronouns etc this book is very queer and i is great for that as well um they do a really good job with that and yeah it i think this is fantastic because it means i won't need to reread Feybound when the next one comes out that will give me a very quick rundown of who everybody is exactly what's happened in the book etc etc so i did enjoy this one i gave it four stars next we do have mile high by liz tomford which is the first book in this series the windy city series i think we're following zanders and it's Stevie, uh, he is a hockey player. She works on the uh, team's aeroplane, uh, private jet, and they end up with a romance. And I really love this one. I thought it was very, very good. Uh, it took me about fifty pages to get into this one because I couldn't, I couldn't stand Xander's to start off with. But I really started to warm up to him. I think the character arcs of both Xander's and Stevie was phenomenal in here, and I loved that we got so much backstory with the side characters as well. Because obviously we're going to get the their stories in the rest of the series stevie and ryan her twin brother i loved their friendship like their relationship and um, they have a very strong sibling bond like me and my brother and i loved to see that and i just really enjoyed this story i thought it was very good it got four and a half on core pile and four on goodreads and then last but by no means least we have ghost roast which is an arc of a graphic novel that i got from harper 360 so thank you to them for sending me a copy this one was okay because it is an arc basically it will be in color i assume the whole thing will be in color when it comes out but because it was an arc obviously to save on printing they 
made it black and white like a good portion through the book not a good portion through the book the majority of it was in black and white so the color kind of like stops here and the rest of it is black and white which is absolutely fine and did not bother me in the slightest the color portion of this book of this graphic novel is absolutely stunning the color palette's beautiful and i think it's going to be a really gorgeous book when it comes out uh, this one follows chelsea whose dad works well owns the paranormal removal services basically getting rid of ghosts in people's houses and stuff like that and when she was a kid she thought it was really cool however it isolated her at school a lot and then she got noticed by some of the popular girls in school one day because her backpack was cool or something and she ended up hanging around with them they don't treat her too great but she hangs around with them regardless because it makes her somebody and it makes her feel better and now one day she ends up getting arrested with these girls and a few other kids from her school because they are loitering in a graveyard um so she ends up getting arrested and she's now grounded for the rest of summer vacation and she has to go work with her dad she's not too happy about this situation but she does it regardless turns out she can see ghosts <laughs> and now she wants to help her dad but also help the ghosts and make sure that her dad doesn't just you know fire them away she wants to try and help them find peace so overall i enjoyed the story what i will say is that there were several times in this now i don't know if it's because it's an arc and i'm really hoping that these will be fixed by the time the finished copies have come out which they should have done by now anyway by the 29th of february this was released there were times in this where i found myself very confused because the speech bubbles did not line up with the character that was saying the words and it confused the life out of me and kept pulling me out of the story um so on that basis i did struggle with it a little bit it took me a lot longer to get through this than it should have done and on that basis it bothered me quite a lot i did give it three stars i think the general gist of the story is very good and i did enjoy it and i think the illustration is going to be absolutely beautiful i would love to see a finished copy of it but overall three three and a half stars for this just because of that mess up with the speech bubbles it really did bother me it kept pulling me out of the story a lot because i then had to try and figure out who was saying what and it wasn't an easy thing to do so in general three stars three and a half on core pile it was fine and that was everything that i read in february it was a lot <laughs> it was a lot i read some chunky books i did read quite a lot i took part in several readathons in did i say january then i meant february i took part in several readathons in february um obviously we had polathon and then i did take part in pokathon which i did read spikes family volume 2 for it was the only thing i read and then we had literature in which i read seven books and dnf a book as well so um we, i did take part in quite a few readathons and i did read a lot to be fair but i had a really good time i had quite a few five stars quite a lot of four stars and then a couple of three stars and like three dnfs but that's okay um but yeah chat to me in the comments down below what was your favorite book of the month for february and have you read any of these will you pick any up on my recommendation if there's one i would recommend to you the most it would be lights out surprise surprise uh but yeah i hope you have enjoyed this video chat to me in the comments down below and i will see you in whatever comes next bye for now mm -hmm.